Whoa, it's blowing up a storm today out there. Right guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm all back from Iceland now. Such an amazing trip. If you haven't checked that video out, go and check it out. Um, also subscribe and do the usual stuff to make sure you keep up to date with all the videos. Um, so I'm back here, back in the UK. It is an absolute mess in here because I've got the trek is basically upside down. The trek build that I've been doing, it's upside down. It's in pieces, but I've been doing so much stuff to this. Um, I just, ah. So originally, because I've got the other high power bike, that one there. I was just gonna do the Trek build purely for the sake of the videos and to sort of, you know, help with this motor kit stuff that we've started to sell through the store. But I've just got carried away with it um, because it's actually an awesome e-bike. The way it's ended up, it's a really good bike. And because, there's a long story, but because of the big bike that I've got here and the fact that it's it's running so much power that, you know, really, it's really for off-road use only. But with the Trek, because it's more like a bike and it, you know, you can actually pedal it, and it's pretty lightweight. I've kind of gone that direction with it, trying to make it sort of, you know, really lightweight bike. Ultimately, I probably should have just bought a frame really because I've, I've changed everything on the bike so far. Um, so the bike's upside down. I'll, I'll show you it later on, maybe once I've got things sorted out. And um, so I've got a new front fork on here. Um, so this is like a RockShox Recon um, front fork on here, which is so much better. Now the original forks were like sun tour forks, just sprung forks and that, it was like a pogo stick. You were riding along and it was just bouncing up and down. And you know, as soon as you kind of lift up a, from a bump, it would just go bang and you just get this shock of it. Horrible stuff. If you're used to using sort of rock shot stuff like on here, I've got the Triple Crown one, which is just an amazing bit of kit. It's so smooth. So I'd kind of take that out and then ride this and be just like, that's just horrible. So I changed the forks. Anyway, there's some other stuff I've done on here including putting the um, pedal assist sensor on this side. Um, ideally, it'd be better going on, on that side. Shout out to Pete, who I've been chatting to on WhatsApp. I don't know if he's got a YouTube channel. Uh, maybe I'll insert it if I can get it off of him. Um, but he's been doing some really good stuff um, with the pedal, pedal assist sensor. Um, it's basically just like a cadence sensor, just magnets. Um, now, a few of you guys will go, oh, you got it the wrong way around. And actually, I put it on this way around because I couldn't be bothered to take all this off. And, and kind of go that route and kind of do it properly, I suppose. So basically I just got the sensor ring and I've just JB welded it onto the end of here because there's no nut on this side to actually clamp the sensor in. And this is the other way around because it's meant to go on that side really, but it works. If you have it this way around, these magnets are so strong that they actually activate that sensor. And I've been running around, I've probably done like 15, 20 miles. It's been absolutely fine. So if you want an easy way to do it, um, some of you might say it's a bodge job, but you know me, you know, if it works, it works. And it, if it looks neat, it's good. JB Weld is the most insane stuff. Um, it's just like high temperature epoxy with kind of metal, it's got metal in it or metal, metal particles in it. Um, but I've got something called a quad bike, basically like a, a, um, a speed sensor magnet and, and all that kind of stuff on the quad bike. And it's been on there for three years and it hasn't come off. It's just powerful stuff. I mean, if I need to get that off, I don't know how I would do it, probably just heat it up or something, but for now it'd be fine. So the reason why this thing's in bits at the moment um, is because, and he hasn't got a back wheel, is because we're gonna start doing this MTX 39 um, rear wheel, like the Sun Ringle one. I, some of you will have seen this before. It's not, it's been around a long time. Um, it's basically like a, a really thick, really strong rim, which is perfect for this sort of stuff. So the rims that we do in the normal kits, um, you know, still be doing those. They're fine for kind of normal um, kind of usage. But if you wanna get a fatter tire on there, a bigger, wider, you know, chunkier tire on there and you wanna make the use of, you know, what space you've got here. And also you want something super strong as well if you're gonna be bumping up and down things and, and you shouldn't really be doing like proper mountain bike stuff with rear pub motors, because, you know, it's a lot of weight on that back wheel. But this um, sun wrinkle rim is definitely the way forward. Obviously on the big build, I've got motorcycle rims on here. That is advised really if you've got the space. And of course this thing's virgin on being a motorcycle anyway. Which brings me on to the next thing, which is quite interesting, is I've started to pick up the MSVA thing again. Um, a little while back, um, I, two years maybe, I don't know, it's two years, maybe two years, it's, time has flown. Um, but I started to kind of investigate the process of registering an e-bike on the road. I got so many hate comments about this, like people were saying, oh, why are you doing that? You you know, you just float under the radar. Why, why, why'd you go, why are you going to that limp? And then on the other hand, I actually had quite a lot of people that were really interested in that side of things as well. So it's it's quite mixed. I can understand both angles from it. Um, you know, some people just want to want to kind of chance it and just, 
you know, think that, what's the point? Why, why do you want to do that? Because you can't ride it like a normal bike. But I think as time's moving on, there's so many companies that are making e-bikes now, and some of them are verging on not looking like, you know, not looking like pipe bikes, even though they've got pedals. This actually looks like a bicycle when it's got the saddle on, but with the motorcycle seat, it really starts to look not like a, not like a bicycle anymore. So yeah, I've started the conversations again with the DVSA and, and Vosa and all, all of that. Like it's, it's a really weird process, but basically um, I can give you the email address if you're interested in, in doing it. it. It basically starts off, you have to fill in some application forms. You have to get a VIN number for your bike so that it's effectively got a chassis number because obviously you know it doesn't have a chassis number if it's a, if it's a bicycle um, and and then that's that's the kind of process but the idea is yeah to get this bike on the road properly as a moped and i know my good friend vortex tony is doing the same thing as well so this is going to be interesting to see what happens between the you know our two channels and and how we kind of go about it i've done a lot of the work already um, and i've been kind of talking to certain people about you know how to do this you can see here, you know, I've got a brake light on here. This is probably not going to be good enough because you need to have the ind indicator separate from that, I think. But there's so many little bits and pieces that you have to kind of work through. Um, even things like, you know, that ball end on the end of that ball end. I love that. That ball end on the end of there has to be a certain diameter and these levers have got to be right. You know, like this switch here is over here at the moment. It really needs to be there. Just need to sh shuffle that across. Headlight, you know, it's all got to be E marked. I've taken the indicators off because I couldn't get them because I couldn't get the bike out of my gate. It's a long story, there's something in the way. And you've got to have the things like an accurate speedo with like miles per hour. You know, there's so many different things. There's, you're supposed to have a stand on also, which I've taken off because it was causing a nightmare. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to have to do some extra work to get this sorted again so that we can put it through that test and um, yeah, hopefully get it on the road. Anyway, that's where we're at. So cue the comments about all this. Um, it'll be interesting to see what's happened or what's changed in the, in the late last two years. Um, and actually the reason why I didn't do it, there's a lot of people that said, why, why, you know, why, why did you stop with that MSVA project? Well, I basically moved house. Um, I got the Twizy and I sort of thought, well, actually, why am I going to bother? You know, I don't need to have the bike on the road and the Twizy as well. How many vehicles do you really need that are kind of on the road? But time has come to do this because I think it's, it's definitely, I need to show that it's possible to do it. Um, I know it's already possible. There's, there's people that have done this before, so I'm not doing anything new. Um, but I have seen a lot of photos of these bikes that have been, um, you know, with the mirrors and everything, and they just they just look horrendous once they've got all the, the number plate and everything on. So I want to do it like everything that I do. I want to try and make it look good, um, and you know, it's going to be it's, it will be a challenge to you know <laughs> to to do that because you know once you start putting mirrors on and all that, it just makes it just look like a bit goofy. But um, we'll see what we can do anyway, and, and hopefully we'll be able to you know, have an example that you know, anyone can follow if they want to do the same thing. I'm just waiting for this MTX rim to turn up and then I can put this wheel back on and, and show you this finish, but um, I don't know what's happening. But as usual, FedEx is playing up and it doesn't look like I'm going to get this until maybe a couple of days, so this is going to stay in bits. Also need a bigger blimmin' workshop, this is getting a bit stupid in here. <laughs> this weather though, oh my god. Right, just come back into the office, I've had another motor kit turn up, another sample. Look at this, this is much better. Um, so this is this allows you to easily disconnect the um, motor and everything else, and all the hall connector, all the hall sensors and everything like that. So you don't have to take the whole thing off um, the bike when you're taking the back wheel off. Been talking about this for a while, a couple of you have mentioned it as well. You know, it's just a nightmare trying to, you know, take, take the main cable off. So having a connector, and then the other end obviously just goes off to the speed controller, just makes it a lot easier to remove it. Right, it's a bit later. No sign of the um, the wheel for this bike yet. Looks like FedEx have messed it all up and it's not gonna be here until Monday, so there you go. Anyway, it's probably because of Chinese New Year and stuff like that, that's why things kind of get a bit kind of cocked up. So yeah, I was talking about that connector, you know the one on the um, on the wheel that I was showing you? Um, I've got gloves on because I'm just about to pop out in the twizzy and it's a little bit chilly out there. Basically, yeah, th that connector is for the thousand watt uh, motor. There's actually a bigger connector which is on the higher power kits as you'd expect. The pins on the phase connectors um, are actually a lot fatter than, than the rest of them which is good what you'd expect. But yeah, the uh, connector for the for the higher power ones are actually even bigger. I mean there's no way you could do it on the on the big bike. There's no way you'd be able to do that. You'd need to use like, I don't know, like Anderson's or You'd need to use something, maybe like XT's connectors might work if you wanted to do that on, on this bike, but you're gonna have to make something up. 
Anyway, I need to pop out. I'm gonna go and get some chips from the chip shop. I'm gonna pop out in the Twizzy. Um, and yeah, pass its MOT yesterday. Oh, it's horrible out here. I had to change my LED headlights back over to the um, to the normal like normal crappy H4 bulbs, um, you know, for the MOT test. But I've changed them back now. Also changed the wiper as well. It actually works. My little heater's still going well as well. Just the little foot heater. Turn that on. Right, let's go and get some grub. Sometimes I feel bad taking up a whole parking space because this thing's so small. There's a Nissan Leaf pulling in beside me. It's electric, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like that, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. What, what sort of range do you get on that? Not a lot. It's, it's only about 40 miles. Oh, right, okay. But like for local use and stuff like yeah. that, it's pretty. It's like a go kart, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Right guys, so I'm just editing this video and I just realised I hadn't mentioned something that I put on. I don't know if I did it, if it was on there when I was doing the original video, but anyway, it's this. So you might have noticed this in the pictures. It's a suspension seat post and it's by Cane Creek and it's called a Thud Buster. So basically what happens here is your, your weight obviously goes onto here and then this kind of pivots across. It's pretty clever and it's got these kind of elastomers which basically absorb any bumps because obviously this is a hard tail. Um, you know, this tyre is actually up pretty high because you know to, to sort of try and limit punctures i might be going tubeless on this as well it's another kind of thing that i'm kind of working out um how to do um, but basically this combined with you know your front suspension is a really good alternative to like full suspension because obviously the other bike has got full suspension it's got rock shocks rear shock and um you know the, the kind of boxer style front um forks on that as i've mentioned before so you know to get a really smooth ride it's quite difficult on something like this so i decided to go this route this is quite expensive bit of kit but let's just show you so if we just get onto the bike you'll see see it moving it's pretty cool right and these are little elastomers in here you can just change basically depending on your weight and everything else you can adjust the saddle um you know kind of pivots that way and adjust it because because of the way this works it kind of shifts slightly backwards you know so that might not be for everyone but you know if you kind of get it right it takes a little bit of playing around with to get the exact kind of angles right so you're comfortable on there but it's actually a really good alternative to rear suspension. Just takes the bumps away. And then you can have the pressure on this right up so you can avoid those punctures. So another thing I did obviously is change the tires from the standard ones that are on here. Got much better tires on here now from the standard ones. This is actually a 2.3. It could be, you could actually go higher. I could actually go up to like a 2.8 on this um, ideally. But um, for now I've got this one on here and it actually looks pretty, pretty chunky as it is it squares off a little bit with this rim but it's okay as i say i'll probably change this for like a either like a 2.5 or 2.8 because i've got plenty of clearance um down there as well i can fit one finger down there so that's all right um, and i did the same on the front so i've actually i've actually gone back to running the 29 inch on the front because i just found it actually handled so much better um and i've just got a wider one and look at this clearance you can't get a lot better than that look at that i couldn't have planned that any better so that clearance in there is absolutely spot on and then i know i've already covered this in the other video but i've got my um hope brake which i've put on the front i haven't bothered to change the uh, the rear one because it's a bit difficult um because everything's kind of run through the frame on here so i, I don't know how you would do that i haven't even looked into that um so we've got this on here and a 200 mil disc as well on the front which is also hope just to make sure this front end stops and the braking power on this is just insane now it's really really good so that combined with that front fork so i noticed the old fork used to kind of flex when you kind of braked um with this new brake on it so it really wasn't good and they always have this little warning down here saying don't use it for downhill so i mean it's not gonna be any good for an e-bike if you can't use it um for downhill stuff and finally onto this i've really neatened everything up i'm not using that little bag anymore i'm using this project box which basically just fixes onto the um the bottle holder at the back the rear bottle holder there or pump holder whatever it is um and i've just basically screwed that in all the wires go into here and it's just so neat if you want to get into it you just unscrew these and that's all kind of nicely done and as you can see there's just basically those are the those are the only wires you can see um, down here under there but there's literally no wires anywhere else other than the usual stuff up there and then i've kind of carbon taped this down here um, the cables that I couldn't fit. Ideally, it'd be lovely to get them to go through this frame, but I think it's just going to be too much hassle, really. Um, but I've just used this kind of carbon tape. I've tie wrapped the wires up the top. Um, this is just the display wire, and um, I don't know what the other one is. Oh, yeah, thumb throttle um, on there. And then I've just kind of taped over the top of that. 
and that is all good. Really, I think the only other thing I'm going to do um, is probably put like a regen switch on here because the regen actually activates when you, if you use the thumb throttle and then you kind of, you know, go from a throttle position and then kind of pull it back um, just before you hit the zero mark, it actually activates regen. So I didn't know that at first, it's quite an interesting find. But what I might, might do is just put like maybe like a, a switch, I haven't worked out how I'm going to do it yet, but maybe just like a switch so that you can grab a switch um, instead of that rear brake to basically slow you down by regen. <laughs>